where Deputy President William Ruto has had to his request to skip some sessions of the ICC trial granted, albeit with cavities. Well, Ruto's trial is set to open on September 10th. And to give us more on this latest development is KTN's Eric Njoka, who joins us live from our KTN newsroom. Eric, this must be good news for Ruto's defense team. Well, you remember that uh, William Samoy Ruto, who is the deputy president, uh, had gone to court or requested on uh, requested to have uh, to be absent during his trial uh, on the 17th of April. What he says is, is that he wanted uh, the court to waive his presence during throughout the trial, actually. And what happened? The prosecutor denied this, and this happened when witnesses were pulling out of the of the case, and this was a pullback or a setback, if you like. And what happened? The ICC Rome started states that uh, the accused persons are generally required to be physically present at the trial, the full trial. And also the chamber exceptionally permits any accuser uh, when necessary to, be, to pull out or to have uh, an excuse to, to pull out of the case or the trial. His duty as deputy president has granted him uh, the exception of making such an excusal reasonable to strike a balance that the ICC is saying. What happens is that they've given him a condition that Ruto has to attend the opening and closing of the trial, the judgment, and also the witness hearing, and also he has to attend the hearing of the uh, sentence and also the sentence itself. According to his co-accused, that's uh, Joshua Arab Sang, he says that he will attend uh, the, the trial throughout. And also Uhuru Kenyatta, what they say is if he makes a similar application, the trial chamber will have to consider application according to his own facts. Take a look at this story. Deputy President William Ruto had made an appeal to the ICC that his trial continues without him. That request invoked a provision in the court's rules that allows an accused person to waive his rights for personal appearance before the court. Ruto had argued that as Kenya's deputy president, he needed to be allowed time to execute his constitutional duties as deputy head of state. And on Tuesday, the 18th of June 2013, the court accepted the request. Through a statement, presiding judge Chile Eboe Esuji conditionally allowed Ruto not to participate in some of the trial sessions, but outlined crucial sessions in which he must participate in person. It is important to mention that the chamber also made it a condition that Mr. Ruto is required to be present when victims come to court to express their views and concern in person, as well as during opening statements by victims counsel and any reparation hearing or victim impact hearing that may be held in the case. The court said it had reached the decision to allow Ruto skip part of the trial considering his new post as Kenya's deputy president. It should be noted that Mr. Ruto is not on trial in his capacity as deputy president of Kenya. He is being tried in his individual capacity for allegations of crimes made against him personally. The chamber, however, ruled that his position will not grant him immunity from standing trial at The Hague. It also dismissed Mr. Ruto's request to be allowed to attend his trial through video link. The judges ruled that Ruto must observe the obligations in the March 8, 2011 summons to appear. The obligations, among others, require the accused to refrain from corruptly influencing or interfering with the witness's testimony. The decision was carefully considered and delivered in a way that seeks to avoid any negative impact on the participation of victims. However, one of the chamber judges, Olga Herrera, appended a dissenting opinion, saying it would be wrong for Ruto to be excused from trial based on his status. The other accused persons, Joshua Arab Sang, has vowed through his counsel that he will be in attendance throughout the trial. Eric Njoka, KTN.